Hello, friends and fellow lovers of all things beachy. Welcome to The Beach Speaks. I'm your host and beach lover page friend, sharing conversations and stories to help you reconnect with the beach, return to your soul, and reimagine your life. Whether they're an entrepreneur, a conscious creator, or just someone who loves the beach, all my guests have a story to tell about what makes the beach the place to be. So grab a cool drink, sit back in your beach chair, stick your toes in the sand, and enjoy this episode of The Beach Speak. Aloha, beach lovers. If you've been listening to the podcast recently, I've been talking a lot about the not-so-fun aspects of beach life, hurricanes. I thought you might need a break from that and want to hear more about the pleasant aspects of beach life. So I called my go-to beach travel expert and super fan of the podcast, Kathy, because, lucky her, while we were battling hurricane force winds here, She has been basking in the gentle island breeze in Maui, Hawaii. Hmm. I have to admit, I don't know why Maui isn't super high on my beach adventure bucket list. What is it about Maui that everyone I know wants to go there? Fun fact. According to statistics released by the state of Hawaii, Last year, nearly 2.3 million visitors set foot on the island of Maui. Put it this way, that's the entire population of Houston. Hmm. And ask Google, and you'll find page after page of information. I read in a blog that out of eight Hawaiian islands, Maui is by far the most unique. It said that As soon as you step foot on the Valley Isle, you'll understand why it deserves the title of the must-see island in Hawaii. The pristine beaches, blue waves, lush forests, hidden waterfalls, and two volcanoes. Okay, now you've got my attention. But wait, there's more. Maui has been repeatedly voted number one by several travel magazines and... Travel and Leisure named Maui the sixth most beautiful island in the world. Ooh, the most beautiful islands in the world? That sounds like a great topic for a future episode. What do you think? Yeah, I'm definitely up for that. But for now, let's leave the Google search for a moment and find out what Maui is really like from someone who's right there now. Aloha. Hey, Kathy. Welcome back to the podcast. Aloha, Paige. Aloha. Where are you? I am in Maui uh, uh, in the islands of Hawaii. And most specifically, um, my the area where I'm staying at the moment is called Kihei. Well, how is Maui speaking to you today? You know, it's very interesting, Paige, because when we, we spoke about uh, having a conversation here while I'm in Maui, I was thinking to myself, you know, this beach is so different from the ones I normally experience in my travels. And I, and I really paid some attention to that. Um, you know, the the Hawaiian Islands are very steeped in history and tradition. And, you know, people believe in the spirits of the water and the sand and the earth and the sky and, you know, all of these things. And they and they're integrated into their daily lives, even today. And, and I find that so interesting and, and moving. So as I was thinking about, you know, our conversation, I thought, you know what? It is exactly this beach here and uh, and all the beaches here on Maui 
and probably in the entire island chain, um, what they actually do is the exact name of your program. They actually speak. And, you know, some beaches you go to for the calm, relaxation, you know, uh, water sports, whatever. But the beaches here, these beaches are cleansing, they're healing, they're spiritual, and they actually do speak to you. And if you ever wanted to experience that kind of um, amazing connection with nature, this is your place to come because these beaches have a voice and it's different e at each place. It's not the same voice at each beach. Each beach has its own voice. And girl, it is literally speaking to me. <laughs> Can you beach hop in a, in a day or would you want to spend a few days at one and then go to another? And how close are these? I have no concept of Hawaii <laughs> at all, <laughs> except that it's this beautiful, far away place. <laughs> yes. In Maui, uh, well, first of all, in the entire Hawaiian chain, all beaches are public. So even if the beach happens to be at a particular resort or whatever, as long as there's a public access walk to that beach, you can go and enjoy it, um, whether you're a local or a visitor, whatever. Most people who come to Maui will rent a car. That's really the best way to get around here. So absolutely, um, you could spend every day of your, I mean, I've been here for a month and I haven't seen even half the beaches at this point. Yeah. We're going to circle back to that. Uh, how do you get to spend a month in Maui? <laughs> but continue. Tell us more about these beaches. I mean, there's a beach right across the street from where I'm staying. And then just if I were to just drive up and down South Kihei Road, which is the road that I'm on, there's any number of beaches and beach parks that you can stop and enjoy. And each one with its own kind of landscape and um and flavor and voice. Uh, it, it really is uh, a beach lover's paradise here. And if you want mm -hmm. something that's a little more calm, say you have children and you don't want to have, you know, really huge waves coming in or, or heavy undertoes, they have some that are very calm across the street from me and something called the fish pond. And it has a natural kind of lava rock barrier and it makes the uh, waves break before they hit the shore. And so this is a really calm place to take children to swim and you don't have to worry about them getting washed away in the in any kind of wave action <laughs> and it's shallow you know and it's super clear and then uh, a couple weeks ago I went to on the other side of the island I went to some place called baby beach and again same sort of situation you've got this sort of natural rock wall that's uh, breaking the waves before they reach the shore and it was clear and blue and just I just snorkeled around. I mean, it was absolutely lovely there, although it does have a natural current that seems to travel to the right. So if you just sit and not move at all, it's like you're in a lazy river. It just starts taking you down this um, little <laughs> current. I actually saw people, uh, you know how people will swim laps. I actually saw mm -hmm. people swimming uh, laps against the current, that, that natural current but they weren't moving at all. It was like one of those pools where you just go against the current. Like an infinity yeah, pool yeah. <laughs> sort of thing. It was amazing. Oh my goodness. We were talking about you are staying there for a month. I know that you like to do that in different locations. Really stay for a while and immerse yourself in everything that's going on. And the listener can't really see, but it looks like you're in a, in a house, an apartment. Um, actually, I'm in a I'm in a condominium, or, uh, like a small studio. And um, this particular time, I just had uh, something that the Hawaiians call good mana. <laughs> so so ma <laughs> mana is a uh, kind of like a, an energy or a spiritual energy that denotes power and strength. And so if, if a, a local individual would come up to you and say, hey, you know, you have really good mana. You know, that's like really one of the best compliments that you could ever receive. Really? I never heard of that. I've yeah. So I had some good mana uh, come my way, which um, a very dear friend of mine, Michelle, and her family own this cute little condo here in Kihei. 
and they were kind enough to allow me to to use it. So good mana. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So here you are in October, in part of November coming up, you'll be in Maui where the rest of us, well, a lot of us are thinking, oh, might be nice to be in Hawaii right now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that That's wonderful. For those of us who uh, might not have the, the mana that you have <laughs> <laughs> right now, where would you suggest we we stay or places to look at. I'm assuming that there are resorts there, but are there mostly just condos to rent? Oh, yes. You know, honestly, there there is a plethora of uh, accommodation options here. When my clients call me at my travel agency to to make plans to come to this place particularly, um, I always try to find out what their needs are because, you know, some people, uh, when they go on vacation, the last thing they want to do is see a kitchen where they have to cook something. You know what I mean? Um, So for them, I would recommend a a full service resort. There are resorts on the other side of the island or, you know, to the west of me in Ka'anapali and Lahaina, and then to the east of me in Wailea. So those are the two major resort areas. Although there are a lot of people here in Kihei who are just visiting. This is a more of a local neighborhood. Um, But no matter where you are truly uh, in Maui, you're close. I'm not really more than 20, 30 minutes from anything. So it's Mm -hmm, super easy mm -hmm. to get around. Um, I will circle back to that because I want to tell you something funny about the the GPS. But um, (laughs) so, yeah, normally I would put people in Ka'anapali area or Wailea. Wailea is a little more of a luxury type area. And in Ka'anapali, you have all sorts of accommodations from full full service resorts, as I said, to condominiums, to little, you know, private bungalows. Uh, you know, there's really any type of accommod- accommodation you can imagine you can get here. So it really mm. depends on how long you're staying, how much, you know, for me, like I had to do a lot of cooking because food is expensive here. So, you know, mm-hmm. having the kitchen was perfect for me, but I'm staying a good long time. You know, if I was only coming for a week, I probably wouldn't worry about having a kitchen. You know, I did, however, on my journeys here, find a lot of great places where uh, you can eat for uh, a lot less. Like they have food trucks everywhere and these food trucks are amazing. And then they have uh, this local thing. Um, they're called $10 Plates. And so for $10, you get this big plate of food and uh, it's a lot of it's typical Hawaiian style food, again, delicious. Mm -hmm. So you can sort of, you know, work it. So, you know, maybe you're not having a dinner at a fancy restaurant every night and you're utilizing some of the local options as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell me, I'm intrigued about this GPS. Oh, (laughs) so. I don't, I don't want to miss out on a story. When, uh, when I first arrived, uh, my cousin was here with me for a couple of weeks, uh, Dina, you know her. And uh, yeah. so it started out, I was driving and uh, she would kind of be the navigator. So I have the, the uh, Waze app on my phone, which is what I use a lot for GPS. And I believe she was using Google Maps. I, I can't remember exactly, but... The Hawaiian alphabet is literally 13 letters. However, the names are like 26 letters long. (laughs) Yeah, I'm thinking of some of those football players from the islands that their name stretches from shoulder to shoulder and down their side. And one one good rule of thumb, and this doesn't work in every instance, but this was some a Hawaiian person said this to me, and I and I found it very helpful, is that when you're trying to pronounce a Hawaiian word, especially a long one, think of saying every single letter. Like Ka'anapali is K A, and then that little I don't know what that little symbol is, and then another A. Mm-hmm. So there's two A's right in a row. So it'd be a a. So Ka'anapali. You know what I mean? Gotcha. So trying to get each letter in. Um, so some of the street names here are really long and hard to pronounce. And you just look at it and you're like, uh, kapuka, kuka, kuka. like, I don't know. <laughs> 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 okay. 
So if you're a tourist and you're trying to navigate this area and go somewhere and your GPS is saying, turn left on Kakuka Kakuka I I'm cracking up. <laughs> so it was interesting because Dina's Google Maps or whatever she was using simply could not speak Hawaiian. It, I mean, she'd like say to turn on like whatever the street was, and we're like, "Are you what?" <laughs> and then we would see it and go, "Oh, it's Piaua Street or something." You know what I mean? It was. <laughs> oh my god, so, that is so funny. I will say that ways. Even though I it, it wasn't the best navigation option here, did speak the best Hawaiian. <laughs> okay, GPS option. So use Waze for the translation, and then use Google Maps for the yeah, actual. To get there. Yeah. So between the two. <laughs> oh, so we, it was really. I mean, we were laughing every day because it was so, super funny. And um, I mean, there were times when we're thinking, "Oh gosh, this can't be right," you know. Especially when we were trying to find, like, someone would say. Oh, go to Sparky's food truck, you know? So we're trying, like, does that even have an address? Like, we don't know. <laughs> but lo and behold. It's on Pohua. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, <laughs> whatever. Street. Street. And I'm not trying, oh gosh, if anyone's Hawaiian listening to this, please, I am certainly not trying to be disrespectful. I do my very, very best to pronounce the language properly, but it's, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. So anyway, um, yeah, somehow we'd always end up where we needed to go. So, and I got a great tip from uh, one of the sales managers at the Ka'anapali Beach Hotel. They offer Hawaiian language classes for free when your clients arrive. Really? And she said, make sure that they come to the class the very, you know, on the next day after they arrive, because that will help them. Not only is it fun to, to learn the language, but it will help them to um, drive around uh, and understand the names of the streets and things. Yeah. So I thought that was a great tip. Yeah. You don't want to spend your whole time getting lost and yeah. frustrated. And <laughs> honestly, it's super hard to get lost here, truly. Um, uh, they have a lot of these uh, roads that all lead to the same place. So no matter where you are, as long as you you know make a couple turns, you're going to end up on one of these major roads. So Yeah. Okay, well, that that's good. To yeah, <laughs> if I can do it, anyone can do it. <laughs> there, well, there is two things that that came to my mind. One, what's in the ten dollar plate? Oh gosh, um, it could be uh, one of the things that I found completely savory here, and this isn't something that I eat a lot, but um, they do like a pulled pork. I know I'm not sure if they mm-hmm. actually call it pulled pork, but it's some kind of a pork that's roasted. You know, that's kind of a traditional luau thing where they roast pork and that mm-hmm. kind of thing. So I don't know how they do it for, on a daily basis, but it is so savory and delicious. So you would get that. The uh, the purple sweet potato, I can't remember what it is called. I feel terrible. I remember the actual Hawaiian names of these things. <laughs> um, <laughs> and you would get some sort of green, uh, you know, some sort of salad item. And sometimes there's something like similar to a ceviche. And, you know, so it's usually some sort of Hawaiian staples. Yeah. I would go for that probably above a, a restaurant if you really wanted to experience what what the natives yeah. eat. Yeah. That sounds delicious. What else was, oh, I was thinking about mana and spiritual experiences and that you had mentioned these beaches there and have that spirituality and all of that Tell me more about that. Oh, yes. Well, the first day we were here, we went across the street to the beach here uh, in Kihei. And it has pretty large waves uh, coming in, the kind that would certainly knock you over if you weren't prepared for it. You know what I mean? And we just we didn't even go to swim. We just wanted to sit on the beach and look at the water and listen to the waves and that kind of thing. And before we knew it, it was almost like, I don't know if you've ever been hypnotized before, but you go into that area of your brain that's mm-hmm. um, not the conscious, not the, not the subconscious, but the one in between. And that's the one where, you know, if you're driving down the road and you go, wait, where'd that last mile go? That's the part of your brain that, that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. And this beach and this these waves and this the noise and everything, it all just put me right into that spot. And I remember thinking, 
you know, I was having this sort of clarity moment of, you know, I, I've been having some decisions that I needed to make uh, lately and I've been putting them off because I'm here, you know, I'm the, I'll deal that when I get home, you know what I mean? And while I was there, just in that state of not really conscious, but not unconscious and just, just flowing with, with the ocean or in Hawaiian, the Kai, just flowing with that and feeling that energy and that mana, like sort of just, it was like the waves were coming on me, but they weren't really touching me, if that makes sense. And I just felt such clarity. I was able to make decisions about things that have been blocked in my mind for months. Mm. And it, suddenly it would just seem came so simple. And I thought, you know, why did I make this so difficult? Why, why can't I just make these connections with myself and with nature and with other people and, and just let it flow? Why does there have to be this block sometimes? Mm -hmm. So I just felt like it, it really created this flow in me that, that just made me look back and go, wow, that was so simple. <laughs> I just had to sit in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've talked about it before, but that's one of the beautiful things about mm -hmm. being at the beach and the ocean and all of that is that energy really does speak to you in, in a simple way. And you just have to sit and listen and just let it be. Yeah, that's what I would totally go for. I know when people talk about going to Hawaii, I think of honeymoons and those kinds of things. And then I think about that spiritual experience part, oh, yeah. which is what I would be going for, you know. I'm telling you, and you know, I would say Hawaii is both of those things, Paige, for sure. It is one of the most romantic places. There's so much here, um, most of it having to do with the, the natural beauty of it and the magic of the culture and the people and, you know, just even the word aloha you know, having so many meanings. I mean, hello, goodbye, see you soon. I love you. You're my best friend. I mean, so many uh, meanings tied to one word. And when people here say it to you, uh, I don't know, you, you get a feeling like, you know, it could be even a stranger that you don't even know. Like I walk into a drugstore and somebody says, aloha. And I'm like, Oh, it's like such this wonderful feeling, you know, yeah. a, a sort of a, a, a natural uh, feeling of love that you're pouring on people by saying one word. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, there are very few places in the world that that, that happens. So yeah. I really, it's such a magical place here. Whatever you're going to experience, you're going to experience like you wouldn't be disappointed in anything. <laughs> yes. There was another thing I wanted to ask. Does anybody go camping there? Because I know the weather's pretty good for camping. I, most times, I don't know. Camping is huge. Uh, yeah. I saw so many tents set up everywhere. And that's just in the local area where I am. But I'm sure even in other places that are even more natural, perhaps on the road to Hana or something like that, there's even more so. I don't know mm. uh, what the requirements are or if there's any kind of fee. I'm imagining that there probably is um, some sort of mm -hmm. fee for a tent, but I don't think it would be anything like what you pay for a hotel. So yeah, yeah camping is a real big thing here and you, it's pretty temperate year round. Um, the only thing I will say, um, you know, when it rains, it's usually pretty, you know, it rains a good deal. Uh, and then, but then it just goes away and the sun comes back out. I mean, I've had literally, almost perfect weather every single day that I've been here. So mm. every time I open the shades, I think, Oh, what if it's going to be cloudy today? Nope. <laughs> nope. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Another beautiful day. <laughs> I know. And it's so breezy. I don't know if that is something um, just in the Kihei area, but it's been so lovely and breezy. I love the breeze. Now, the, I'm going to actually miss it, but next month or starting in the next week or so, the humpbacks will be here oh, in this area. Wow. Yeah. So they'll be coming to, um, It's they'll be giving birth. Um, they'll be foraging here for a while uh, in these waters. And um, it's literally, you can just be walking down the beach and they're just like right there. I mean, 
Yeah. Wow. So, that's amazing. You don't, I mean, you could, they have little tours where you can go out and, and, you know, be on a boat and see them or kayak or even paddle boards, things like that. But you don't even have to do that. I mean, they're just right there. You're right there. Mm-hmm. What an amazing experience that would be. I I can only imagine. Oh, gosh, I know. <laughs> oh, well, we always hear that Hawaii is expensive. How do the, the natives or the indigenous people or whatever, how, how is their lifestyle there? I'm thinking of TV shows I've watched where it's uh, neighborhoods are rather impoverished. and I Well, I didn't see anything like that. But then again... Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's just the area where I am uh, is a little more touristy. I'm not sure, mm-hmm. but I do, I have a friend who lives here and I do remember uh, him saying that in order to survive, most people have two, sometimes three jobs. And of course, if you're in a relationship or whatever, both people are working, you know, that kind of thing. Also, uh, I've met a lot of people on this trip, you know, who just like maybe my server at a restaurant or whatever, as somebody working in a shop, um, because they always ask you, where are you from? You know? And so you, I will say Ohio. And then they say, Oh, I used to live in uh, Santa Fe or, you know, whatever. Like they would say where they were originally from, but they moved to Hawaii, say like 20 years ago, you know, or maybe it was only five years ago. Uh, you know, it just depends. And so a lot of the stories went like, I came here on vacation. I really loved it. I decided not to leave. I moved in with six other people. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a lot of a commune. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of sharing um, uh, occupancy here, and a lot of people rent out rooms in their homes. Um, oh, okay, you know, so people will have that kind of accommodation that's available. And then, because this is such a a mecca for tourism. There's a, there are uh, quite a few jobs available in that sector. You know, if you wanted to work at a shop or at a restaurant or at a touring facility, or uh, I went on a, um, a snorkeling tour a couple weeks ago and it went out to the Molokini crater. We snorkeled in the crater, which was stunning, by the way, the water was so clear. It was so blue. It was just amazing. And then from there, we went to Turtle Town, which is like a little area. Literally, you could see the cars going by on the highway. It was so funny, but it was a little area in the open ocean where the green sea turtles come to be cleaned by the little cleaner fish. So kind of like a turtle cleaning station is what they called it. And um, So the turtles swim in and then they just kind of hover there and the little fish come and they eat all of the stuff, you know, off the turtle. So it's a great symbiotic relationship because the turtle's getting cleaned and the fish are getting a meal and yeah. it works for everyone. So we were able to snorkel on top of the water and watch this happen. And uh, I had never seen a sea turtle live before, you know, like 10 feet away from me, you know, whatever. And um, um, they would call that uh, Hanu here. Sea turtles mm-hmm. are very revered. Um, this green, this particular green sea turtle is the only um, reptile in Hawaii um, or surviving reptile anyway. And uh, so they they definitely uh, view them as good luck, prosperity, you know, that kind of thing. Longevity because they've been here so long. So um, that was breathtaking, breathtaking. But anyway, the people who were working on the boat who serviced us, you know, for this adventure, I mean, they absolutely love their jobs. Mm-hmm. You know, they came here from different places. They moved here. They got a job on this boat and they're helping people to go out and have these experiences. And, and they absolutely love it. I mean, you can tell when somebody genuinely loves what they do. And that's what I was experiencing from these people. So, yeah, that boat was full of mana that day. <laughs> Turtles are my husband's spirit animal. So, oh, well, he has to go to Turtle Town. Honey, we're headed to Turtle Town. Okay. <laughs> All right. Speaking of that, how do we get to this fabulous place? I mean, obviously, we have to fly. Do yes. you fly into the mainland, as they call it? Well, there's a lot of airlift from the mainland to the Hawaiian Islands, which is great. 
Most of the direct flights from the U.S. are going to come into either Maui or Honolulu, depending on where you start your vacation. Some people do more than one island while they're here. So like if I had somebody who had never been here and they really wanted to experience one or two islands or even three, depending on how long you stay is, I typically start them in Honolulu because Honolulu is more and in the Waikiki Beach area is more of a city. Um, so it's very cosmopolitan. There's a lot going on. I usually try to start people there because then what they want to do is see Pearl Harbor and that's where Pearl Harbor is. Yeah. So you can and experience that, which is very moving, by the way, even if you, if you were not around during that era, you can definitely feel the despair and the energy that happened that day. So I, I always think it's a must see when you're here. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, so there's that and a few other places that I would recommend in Honolulu. Then I take them out to Kauai next. Kauai is called the Garden Isle. So it's very lush, tropical, lots of nature. They've got Waimea Canyon, which is kind of like their Grand Canyon and the Fern Grotto and lots of, you know, hiking and zip lining and all sort of nature stuff uh, that you can do over there. And then finally ending in Maui, maybe. Where in Maui, you get a little bit of both. You have a whole lot of nature and you have some city stuff too. Um, so you have kind of the best of both worlds, um, but on a smaller scale, not a big city like Honolulu, but, you know, like, like I went to this cute town the other day called Paia and it was a, just a little place with a lot of cute art galleries and shops and restaurants and super friendly people. There was a, a shop there. I bought these shoes. This man and his apprentice make these these leather shoes and they're just, they're flat leather and they tie on with these, like a really unique way they tie on with these strings, these leather strings. Mm -hmm. And when I first saw them, I thought, oh God, this would not be for me. I need more support than this. It's a flat piece of leather. But there's something about the way they make them and how they shape to your foot that I put these things on and I was like, what? I mean, I walked so well in these shoes. And I thought, you know what, as I'm not a person who typically goes barefoot, so I often miss out on that connection to the earth. You know how you can get that vibration through your feet? Well, because these shoes are just leather, they're a perfect conduit for me to be kind of barefoot, you know? Um, so they're my new barefoot shoes. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> for the grass and, and stuff. But yeah, so it was like cool little places like that. That's what you could look forward to, you know, when you come to this particular island. And then if you want to see Volcanoes mm -hmm. National Park, then you'll go to the big island, which is uh, Hawaii. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the volcanoes because I know that's something that a lot of people like to see. What's the the sand like there? No two beaches are the same here. You know, oftentimes when you go to other islands, like, well, I'm just going to say Jamaica, for instance, because that's where I go a lot. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much the same sand all around uh, that island. Very few differences. There might be a little more shell action or rock action or coral action, depending on what's in the area. But the sand is relatively limestone and it's the same. Here, though, it's so different. Like, where I am, it's a very coarse and very, it was super hard to walk on because you sink really deep into it. So you are working to walk on that sand. I mean, we, Dean and I went for a walk one day and we ended up walking back on the street because we were, <laughs> we were exhausted. It was, <laughs> it was really like rough terrain, you know, and it's the kind that, that sticks on you and almost looks like dirt. I mean, it, and it's mixed with this sort of red dirt that they have here. Um, so that was very different for me. But then you can go to other parts. You've got black sand beaches, green sand beaches, red sand beaches. I mean, it all depends on what is in the area as to what kind of sand you're going to get here. So Green sand? Wow. Now, I've, mm -hmm. I've heard of the black sand and, well, pink sand, I guess. Pink and Bermuda, so yeah. Red in a way. <laughs> but not green. <laughs> what would make the sand green? I guess, whatever vegetarian. I don't have any. <laughs> what, a, what a vegetarian, what vegetation. It's like, get the words out. Anyway. No, I really, I don't have any idea. Um, well, the only one I know kind of is this, the black sand is supposed, I think, believed to be the silt 
of the, you know, volcanic yeah. rock. Right? Yeah, kind of like in Costa Rica, how that would yeah. like sand. I, I really don't know about the others. That's interesting. Well, I'm I'm ready to pack my bags and see the turtles and the humpbacks and step on some green sand. <laughs> Yes, and listen to the um, to the ocean speaking here because if ever there was a beach that speaks, it's in Hawaii. Mm, wonderful, Kathy. Thanks again for hopping on and giving us a little idea of what it's like to be where you are and experience. What's next for you once you leave Hawaii? Well, I think I need to spend some time at home. <laughs> no. Just in time for the snow. Yeah, where the snow speaks. <laughs> well, I, next year, as you know, I'll be, I'll be doing the uh, group to Cancun. It's been a while since I've seen the Mexico beaches, so that'll be interesting to revisit the those old friends. And then uh, later in the year, of course, Greece and the Greek Isles. So I've not seen those beaches at all. So we, I think we definitely need to do something you know, live from Greece for sure. Oh, oh, absolutely. All right. Well, I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of your day and we'll chat later. Okay. Thank you, Paige. The Beach is Speaking. Are you listening? Okay. That was just the thing I needed to clear my hurricane brain and get focused on my beach adventure bucket list. And you can bet... Maui is on it. I'm curious, what beaches do you want to visit or what's your favorite? Send me a message. The link is in the show notes and let me know. I'll add it to the Beach Speaks bucket list and share it with you in a future episode. Until next time, aloha beach lovers. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Beach Speaks. If you liked what you heard, share the podcast with another beach lover. And speaking of sharing, I want to know how The Beach is speaking to you. Share your favorite beach story or why you love the beach so much. To record a message, just go to my website, thebeachspeaks.com. Click the voicemail button. It's super easy. And I'll play it on the show. And if more beach is what you crave, visit thebeachspeaks.com or follow The Beach Speaks on Facebook and Instagram, where I post all my gorgeous sunrise photos and videos. It's another way for you to reconnect with the beach, return to your soul, and reimagine your life. The Beach is speaking. Are you listening?